If you have a Squarespace website and you are walking through my pre-launch checklist, welcome back. And if you don't have a copy of the checklist yet, I'll drop a link in the description below so you can grab it. Today, I'm going to walk you through setting up your main blog page. There will be a series of videos here on getting your blog ready to go. But in this particular video, we're going to look at that main blog landing page and get it set up perfectly. There are a couple of gotchas, so stick around until the end. I am here in a copy of my Sway template for service-based businesses. If you'd like to check out my template shop, I'll drop a link below. It's a great jump start to get your website started fast. All right, let's go ahead and look at pages. I already have a blog here, but for the purposes of this example, we are gonna start from scratch. So let's say that we want to add a new blog. We could add it in our main navigation or add it here in not linked and then move it to the main nav later if we want it there. I'm gonna start out in not linked. I'll click the plus icon here and then select blog. All right, we've got some options here right off the bat, and these map onto the different layouts you can choose for your blog. So we've got stacked, grid, masonry, or side-by-side. -side. Most blogs you see use this grid format, so for the purposes of our example today, we're gonna walk through the grid layout, but I will show you where you can change the layout if you'd like. Now you can see it auto-populated blog two here. I'm gonna take off that two. And the other thing that I need to do is either from here, this cog icon, or once I click through this icon, I'm going to update the URL slug of my blog. Now I already have one called blog, so it won't let me do that here because I'll be repeating one. But what I can do is I can say, if this is news, let's just make this all news. So a blog can be for a lot of things. You could use it for a portfolio. You could use it for news, for a traditional blog. Sky's the limit here. All right, now that we are here, this panel is probably going to change in the future because right now we go into our blog and then we have to click again to get to the blog content, which is very silly. This happened when Squarespace rolled out monetizing your blog. That is a whole other conversation as well. I'm not gonna cover monetizing your blog here, but just know that you can have a paywall for your blog and people have to pay to read it. So we are here on the blog overview page. This is what we're gonna focus on in this video. In future videos, we'll cover more of the blog content, but let's take a look here. I'm gonna edit my page and then manage posts that has to do with blog content. So we're going to click on edit section. Now you'll see here, we have the basic grid blog layout. Here are those other layouts that we saw as options. There was the side-by-side, -side, there was masonry, there was single column, there was alternating side-by-side. -side. I don't think we saw that one in the options, but it is an option. So you can choose whichever of these works for you. Just know that when you change the layout here, it's gonna reset all the settings below. So if you're not sure what layout you want, pick that first before you get into the weeds with all of these layout options underneath. All right, basic grid blog is what we're gonna be using here. Now let's go through the options one by one so you can see what makes sense for your look and feel on your website. We can have the width be full width, which brings these out to the edges of the site or it can be inset, bringing the content in toward the middle of your website. You can adjust the number of columns here. So how many items appear in each row. And one of the things that I like to do before I decide on this is decide what my image ratio is gonna look like. Will it be landscape images? Then yeah, two is probably good. But if they're square, it's gonna look really weird to have just two. So the more narrow your image is, the more you can get away with putting in a row, the more columns you can have. So if we change our aspect ratio for our images to square, you can see that this feels a little odd. It's just pushing our information down the page, but then we can come back and add another item here. So we can have three columns and it looks a little better. So I like to have more items on a row in general. I like to choose square if you are using regular photos, but if you look at my website, just for example, on the blog here, 
I do something a little different. So I just have the thumbnails here and you'll notice with this vertical effect, I do four across. So that's my go-to. If I'm doing a more vertical look, I'll do four across. If I'm doing square, I do three across. If I'm doing the standard landscape, I can do three or two across. But for the purposes of this example, let's go square. And I think this is a good fit for a lot of blogs. Our eyes are used to seeing square images on Instagram, and it's just pretty pleasant to look at. All right, now that we've decided that we've locked in our columns, we can choose our spacing. So horizontal spacing is the amount of distance between each item here. So right now it's 50 pixels. We could make these really close together, which I don't recommend, or farther apart. But I really think that 50 was a good number here. And vertical spacing as well. Typically, we want a little more spacing vertically than we want horizontally. So this looks like another item rather than part of the item above. So I'm going to leave this at 70, but you can adjust this however you would like as well. We've already decided the aspect ratio of our image, but you could place it above or below the title. It's rare that I see it below, so just for ease of use for your visitors, I recommend keeping it above. The next thing that we can do is adjust the image spacing, and so that is the spacing between the image and our metadata here, and we can make it tighter or looser. I like keeping it pretty tight to the image above, so I'm going to minimize this and make it 10. Our next option is text alignment. And so that has to do with all of the text underneath this blog post. You can see that in this demo, I've got meta description, our title, our excerpt from the post, and we will come back to that in the post video. I'll show you where to set that and a read more link. So we can left align these. And I typically recommend left aligning if your excerpt is more than a line long. It starts to look a little messy if we get long, longer paragraphs centered. So I like to keep those left aligned. And I tend to like left aligned in general, but you can choose whichever makes sense to you. Again, right aligned is not something we see frequently, so it can be a little confusing for your viewers. So I recommend either left or center aligned. Now we mentioned the excerpt. We can either show or hide that. So if your title and the image is enough to compel somebody to click through, I don't like cluttering this up with excerpts. But if you feel like your visitors need a little bit more content to get them to click through and read that post, then absolutely leave the excerpt on. You can also hide or show the read more link. So if you think that your visitors may not understand that they can click through to read the post, you can absolutely turn on this read more link. Again, I like to keep things simple and streamlined. So typically, I hide both of these. Next up, we have our title spacing. So as I decrease this, you can see it's bringing the excerpt up closer to the title. And I love having a lot of empty space in my designs in general, but this is one of those places that I feel like the 10 pixels between the image and the metadata and then 10 pixels between the title spacing and the excerpt makes sense to me because I want it to feel like one thing. And then we've got read more spacing as well. And again, I like it to be about 10 pixels. The other option here is to change the text content width. So right now it is set to go the width of this full image. So if our titles or excerpts were longer, they would get to this point and then wrap to the next line. You can make this shorter, but I typically leave it at right around 90 to 100% so it looks nice and tidy. If for some reason you've made these items closer together, I would recommend decreasing your content width to like 90, so just so you have a little bit of separation here. All right, next up, we can choose to show meta content here under the image. And there are lots of options for this. We can show what categories these posts are. We don't have categories set up for this blog yet because it's new, but if you do plan on having categories, then that's an option. You can show what category the post is in here and it will just appear as text. Right now we have the date. So I'm gonna put it twice so you can see what the delimiter style is. You could also have the author or no category appearing here and you get to show two meta items. I've got date appearing for both because I wanted to show you this delimiter style here. 
You can choose a bullet, a pipe, a dash, or just a space. So whatever, again, makes the most sense for your design. There's also meta spacing. So we can, again, bring this to about 10 pixels to make it look nice and tidy. It's all part of the same thing. Now, I like really clean blog landing pages. I feel like most of the time for bloggers, people land on a blog post in Google search or they're linking to a post. So they don't necessarily enter through this page. So I like to keep it kind of clean and tidy. For me, the date of my blog post isn't super important. The categories, I think people typically get through the title. And I'm going to turn off the read more link and the excerpt. And so this just looks super tidy now. And if our blog post titles are short like this, then if you have this kind of clean layout, I love to center them. But if they are going to wrap around, I like to keep it left aligned. So it really just comes down to the length of title of your blog posts. But this looks pretty nice. Now, I mentioned a couple of gotchas. One is that if you change the layout here, and let's make it a masonry blog instead, you'll see that all of these settings go back to the defaults because I haven't changed any here. And if I go back to basic grid blog, it's going to remember my settings. Now let me go ahead and hit save and exit here. And this is something else to be aware of. So let's go and create yet another blog. And again, under not linked, I'm going to select blog collection. And something that I want to show you, these layouts look like they did before, but this layout has now taken on all of the styling that I chose. So that is a big gotcha. So just know the changes that you make to one will affect the other if they are the same layout. Now, I know that was a lot, but I hope that that helped you get your blog landing page looking beautiful and ready to go. In the next video, I have a really quick one for you on an important setting that you need to address on the blog page. And then we're going to go into styling our blog posts. If you found this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up as it helps other people discover my videos. Thanks for watching and I wish you all the best with your website.